Hi and welcome back to Dev Explaining channel. I recently did a short video about how to get started with Langchain. And Langchain is an awesome abstraction on top of any large language models you like to use. For example, OpenAI APIs, or you can use GPT for all. So kind of the main point of uh, Langchain is that it's a, it's a wrapper or abstraction on top of cool things you can use. So it's perfect for a tinkerer like me who wants to kind of experiment with the capabilities of modern AI and then also build things on top of that. So Langchain is one of the many frameworks that can act as a glue on top of all that. Today's topic is memory. So let's just drive into it. I want to first cover some things I did in my last video in lightning fast speed. If you want to see it slower, you can go and look up the video. I dropped the link in the description section of this video. But first of all, here is a Jupyter Notebook. So I'm using Python to go through these examples. However, Langchain also supports JavaScript or TypeScript. And you can definitely do this without Jupyter Notebook. But in my case, for these demonstrations, Jupyter is quite quite nice environment. You need to have certain uh, libraries. So you need the OpenAI if you want to use OpenAI model today. That's the model for me. Uh, you need to have Langchain. You can get it from the uh, existing libraries. And I'm using python.env simply so that I can hide the secrets and I don't need to show them in my notebook. Instead, I can get the secret API keys from the environment. And by the way, if you want to follow along with my examples, I'm not sharing any uh, Git repositories today, but I dropped the link where you, where you can get the same code snippets easily. That's from the Langchain documentation, pretty much. If you want to follow along, you do need the OpenAI API key. So you need to register, get the API key, perhaps um, pay a little bit unless you still have free credits remaining. But that out of the way, I have... Um, got the libraries, I have the API key. So next thing I can do is this one. Uh, this is from the previous video, just basics of using OpenAI abstraction. So there's Langchain's LLM's uh, package in Langchain kind of module. And from there, I can import different large language model abstractions. OpenAI is one of them. Then I have some parameters. I can define which model I use. There is temperature. Uh, that I can use to generate more or less randomness or, or more or less predictability. And at the core, the LLMs are just prediction engines. So if I have some text, I can put it in and it's going to give me nice prediction based on the text. So it's predicting what's probably the next thing after this one. And in my case, running the model right now, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm hooking into OpenAI servers getting the response from the API and it's a recommending some fun and interesting YouTube, YouTube channel names. I covered all this in my previous video. Oh, code mojo master. That would be awesome. I have to remember that one. Anyways, back to memory. If you don't have any memory on top of this one, that's all you get. So you, you ask something, you get the response, but there is like, uh, it's not remembering the context. It's not remembering the conversation. There is nothing uh, to provide any context. So always the context is exactly what you are passing in. So if you have been using the UI for ChatGPT, you already know how that interface works. So you would provide um, kind of uh, questions and then you get answers. And questions and answers are remembered. So when you continue the conversation, you can refer back to the old bits. And that's the chat experience. That's the awesome experience. So if you want to build something similar yourself, uh, let's say you want to create Discord or Slack or Teams bot, or you want to create a virtual assistant uh, like I have done. So you want to have something that listens to your speech and answers by speaking. Something like that, you probably then want to implement a memory one way or another. And uh, I have some code snippets for you. And these snippets are from Langchain tutorial. I just modified them slightly. So I'm dropping the links in the description section of the video, which, by the way, is an awesome place to drop some feedback or comments or requests or questions, whatever you have. OK, let's keep on the conversation there. See what I did. So the first class that I wanted to introduce to you is very simple. 
This is a very basic lightweight wrapper and you don't really need any models to play with this one. So you have the Langchain package and then from there you get the chat message history. Uh, that class provides you a very trivial basic interface for storing messages. So you can store user messages and you can store AI messages. Main thing it's doing is keeping track of uh, types of the messages. So we have human message, we have AI message. This can be then extended using system messages and we can have, um, let's say, uh, functions, function messages, all kinds of stuff. So mainly it's a container, it's a list of things and it's typing the things. So you can kind of keep track of the conversation and nothing to do with large language models on this level. If I run this, all the all it's doing is just keeping track of what I have stored. Okay, so that's not very awesome one. But if we build on top of that, and then we have conversation buffer memory class here, then what we are doing is basically the same thing. Okay, but one extra thing that we can do is that this is an implementation of the kind of memory. Uh, but it's a conversation buffer in your machine's memory. So when I'm running this in my local machine, the conversation is kept in my local machine memory. And this is an important thing because it's not in ChatGPT servers. It's not, uh, it's not kept in some third-party servers in a location you don't have control over. Instead, I'm taking ownership of it. It's locally here. So I can keep track of it, and if I run this one, it's built still on top of what I just showed to you. But in this case, one capability that I just got is I'm able to load the variables and get the history in nicely formatted string, simple string. And one very trivial and easy way uh, to use this is to hook it to a large language model and then include this with your future questions. So it's just one string and you can push it when you are curing the models, you, you push this as a context, and then the model is able to tap into the whole conversation. And then on top of that, you can continue the conversation and keep on asking for more. So this is a very simple trick to kind of make, make the model remember things, have a memory. Yeah, so this is the most simple memory class you can have. And I, I'm going to show you some more, uh, but I just wanted to cover this basic level just to get you the idea how simple this one is. So why would this be better than the OpenAI provided API already? Not necessarily any better if you only want to use OpenAI, but main thing is that this is an abstraction that can work on top of almost any model. And then it's an abstraction you can swap and replace. So before we go to uh, example where I'm combining everything. I just wanted to show you um, some things from the ChatGPT documentation. These links also are in the description section of my video. So, memory part, that's part of the documentation. Memory part goes through how you get started and most of my code examples are from here that I'm using. So ob obviously if you want to follow along you can do the same things. However, uh, the point being here is mostly to show you the integrations part. So in addition to basic chat uh, buffer memory, what you can do is you can, you can have Cassandra, you can have DynamoDB, you can have Postgres if you like that one, MongoDB, you can have Mötterhead. <laughs> Mötterhead is a memory server implemented in Rust. You can have your own, you can build your own memory implementation on top of these. And there is a lot of in-depth how-tos, but I'm trying to keep this video lightweight and not last hours. So I'm not going to go through them one by one. By one. Just point out that there is good stuff. So if you are interested, if this is something you need, definitely go there and look for them. Also, there is the nice API documentation with a memory segment. And there is more kind of technical details on all these classes, if you like if you like to kind of expand on what I'm showing to you here. Okay, but let's get back to the code because my last example is how to combine everything. Use the memory, use a chain, use LLM, put them together. So step number one is familiar. We grab that large language model. In my case, it's OpenAI. 
and by default I'm using DaVinci model, but I could define something else if I like here. So the default model is DaVinci latest version. Uh, temperature, uh, if you remember from my previous video, you can ad adjust the randomness or predictability and uh, to keep you amused, I'm using uh, quite a large randomness number here, so uh, it's not going to be so boring, there is some unpredictability included. If you go to zero, you would get very predictable things, and by the way, OpenAI APIs are now allowing things to go up to two. You don't want to try that. It gets really crazy there. But I'm using nice uh, 1.0, so traditional kind of wild default here. Now, conversation is a uh, lang chain abstraction. I'm creating conversation chain on top of my large language model, and then I'm adding my conversation buffer memory instance, the same that I just demonstrated here. And remember, you could replace this with Dynamo or Postgres, and there, then you are deciding where you are storing the conversation and how. And remember, by storing the conversation, you could have a discussion going on for years. So you are taking ownership of this one. Um, you are able to even just store it to disk, but you could always load it and continue from where you started. The only limitation, of course, is that using it like this, uh, there is a token limit that is the main limitation, how much you can punch things in. But we have a trick for that as well. I'm not going to go to the code today, but just wanted to point out that there is conversation summary memory uh, that's trying to summarize the conversation to kind of compress it a little bit. So uh, if you really go wild with this, uh, you will run out of tokens, but there is ways around that to be kind of expanded once you reach that milestone. But as long as you have enough tokens, this is sufficient. So you just hook in the memory, this one or Postgres or Dynamo, and then you are able to kind of keep, uh, you're able to store the conversation for as long as you like, where you like. So it's already uh, miles better than relying on some third party service to, to, to kind of keep track of that. Okay. So the rest is kind of boring. Uh, I'm doing some uh, uh, requests to predict. And uh, main thing is that because I have the memory, it's going to supposedly remember all these. And uh, I'm obviously not having a chat interface here. That would be the next step to build on top of this one. So I'm simulating a conversation by predicting what the large language model is going to say to me. Okay. And uh, final thing here would be that there is some utility functions that are also awesome. So instead of uh, kind of having these uh, classes uh, to be used for the history, what I can do is put the messages to just normal, ordinary Python dictionary. And that is trivial to print or serialize to disk. You can write it to disk as JSON, and then you can load it and continue the conversation later. So that's kind of the end of my code samples, but let's run this so you can see what goes on. I will also explain, explain the steps. But I'm now running this one. So of course there was a little bit of delay, always a delay when dealing with the LLMs. So uh, one interesting kind of sidetrack here is that we can see when we are in conversational mode, uh, we can see how Langchain is priming the conversation bot. and uh, it's kind of prompt engineering technique here. You could tap into this one and replace it with something more clever, but something is provided by default to make it already a little bit conversational to kind of tap into that side of the large language model. Then current conversation is, uh, well, I'm human, I suppose. Hi there, what are your prime directives? And then uh, we are getting response and the next conversation chain chain is now able to kind of use that memory. So we can see my question, and here is the AI answer. Hi there, my primary directive is to da da da. Then I'm saying, that's fascinating, can you elaborate a bit? And then we get again answer, absolutely, in addition to understanding natural language. So it's uh, keeping track of the conversation all the way. Then I have my final question here, and then I'm kind of ending this. So you can see that the end result uh, was serialized to JSON. So my whole conversation is here in one, one 
Well, it's not JSON yet, but it's a dictionary printed, uh, including my last question and the answer to that one. So I could extremely easily, I could now serialize to, this to JSON and then later on load it from disk, uh, get it back. And then I have the messages again, and then I'm able to kind of carry on the conversation based on this one. So just wanted to share this with you. Uh, I started with getting started with Langchain and today I had a focus on memory part. This is not uh, the fanciest part of Langchain and it's not the most expansive. That's why I chose to do a quick video, just brief examples of code and explain the API. This might be something interesting for you. In my opinion, um, learning and tinkering with large language models right now is something essential for any developer right now. Because you get to under you get the understanding of these models, uh, you are in extremely good position for any kind of prompt engineering or coding tasks that would include large language models. So highly recommend it to get into this one. And if you want to tinker with large language models, I would highly recommend uh, starting to learn Langchain. And you can do that from my videos. You can get any other videos from YouTube to supplement these. I try to keep mine uh, rather short and kind of very, very human made with all the imperfections because I like that. But there is uh, plenty things available already in YouTube. Um, if you like these videos, let me know in the comments section and do give me those likes because I would love to do a bit more of these. I'm currently researching Langchain and going deeper and deeper myself. So I would happily share the things. And especially if you have some requests, let me know. Meanwhile, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching it and see you in the next one. Bye bye.